there in three minutes.
For Stellenbosch. We are a vibrant church community committed to seeing the lost come to salvation, the saints equipped to do the work of the ministry, and the town of Stellenbosch changed for God's glory.
Our vision is to reach nations and generations through disciple making, leadership development, and church planting. Kids Church, Youth and Student Ministry are foundational to our focus. We believe that a strong foundation in the Word of God and an intimate relationship with the Spirit of God is how we build resilient disciples of Jesus Christ. Small groups are the building blocks of our church family. Relationship is fostered through our weekly gatherings where we come together to fellowship, pray and encourage one another to run the good race. Our encounter series, Bible school and training schools equip the congregation to do the work of the ministry. Everything from the foundations of the faith to financial wellness schools are offered to shape us into disciples and disciple makers. We hope you enjoy it here with our family. Gather, we build, we grow. Together, we are the church. Amen. Oh, Welcome to church tonight, everybody. It's so good to have you in the house of God. Won't you stand to your feet with us? And while you're standing, won't you give somebody a high five in the face? Please. It's called the laying on of hands for a reason. <laughs> Amen. Who's excited to be in the house of God tonight? That doesn't sound very convinced. Who's excited to be in the house of God tonight? Amen. Amen. Who was at M Camp this weekend? Wow. <laughs> Are you ready to take that energy into celebrating Jesus this morning? Evening. Anyways, I'm going to pray for us and then we're going to sing, Jesus, thank you that in your presence there's fullness of joy. God, at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore, God. And we bring ourselves to your right hand tonight, Jesus. We bring ourselves into your will. Holy Spirit, thank you that you are here. We ask you to lead us to the Father tonight, to lead us to God, to lead us to the Son, to lead us by your Spirit, by your grace, in everything, with everything, Jesus. We bring ourselves to you this evening, God. Have your way. Have your way tonight. Have your way. Have your way, God. Have your way today, Jesus. Have your way today, Lord. There's a voice sing together. Let's sing. Oh, come, let us adore. Oh, come, let us adore. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. We're going to celebrate Jesus tonight.
and he buried our past with his life. We are set free. are singing this song and we're standing like this welcome home and I mean amen amen <laughs> amen but I believe this song was written so that we could dance to it so we're gonna throw a party for Jesus we're gonna celebrate his name and we're gonna do it together in fact I'll take my guitar away
And then whatever happens, happens. The table is set. There's plenty to eat. Come drink from the well. Oh, you thirsty and weak. Come on. The Father is here. So come and receive. Here we go. Here we are free. The table is set. There's plenty to eat. Come drink from the well. Oh, you thirsty and weak. for just a moment. <laughs> In through the nose, out through the mouth. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Whew, let's just let the heart rate come back to 176 beats per minute. Okay, we're coming down here. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you guys doing this evening? Laka, laka. Guys, I've got a question for you guys. How do you guys read the Bible? You look into it. Ha, ha, ha. My name's Luke, guys. <laughs> See? <laughs> welcome, guys. We want to welcome you guys as our very special guest. If you're here for the very first time, we'd love to welcome you. We'd love to give you a special little surprise with a free coffee inside. So if you guys are here for the first time, would you mind just raising your hand for us? Nice and big. We got some. Please keep your hands raised high. Nice and high. Until someone brings you a little gift there. Anyone else? Nice and high, guys. Shake them around. Anyone else? We got some on this side. There we go. We got another one on that side. Anyone else? Anyone here for the first time? <laughs> Our ushers are doing an ex exceptional job here. Under pressure, working very well. Anyone else? Anyone else? All right. Inside, you're going to find a little, bit of, a little piece of paper. If you are here, please, could you guys just fill that out? We'd love to grab your details, love to get in contact with you, and love to just see how, you, how you're doing. Next thing on the agenda, if you're not on the info group, Please, would you guys look up onto the screens? You guys can take out your phones, scan the QR code, and hop onto that group. This is where we can grab, we can get some information for what's coming up in the church and everything that is necessary in that. I know Jesus Weekend is coming up, so it's always a great way to be able to get information. And then, some of you aren't going to like me in this moment. More likely the introverts than the extroverts. So, we're going to encourage you guys. Okay? Meet someone new. Ask them three questions. What is the color of your toothbrush? What is your birthday? And what is your favorite animal? And three, two, one, go. Two minute connect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
पानी पाने वाली है Grab a coffee after the service to continue the fellowship or grab a coffee during the week even. Exchange those numbers quickly. Take your seats. Great. It's so lovely to see everyone excited for church. What a privilege to gather in the house of the Lord as a family. Amen. Great. So can I get an indication who was at AMP Camp this weekend? <laughs> Hallelujah. And whose lives were changed? <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, yeah, it's so lovely to, to be back in church again. I just have a few announcements that I would like to share with everyone of our upcoming events. Um, firstly, we have Bible school that has started already. But there's one free session left. So this Tuesday is the last free session. So if you are still considering whether you want to do Bible school or not, this is the week you should go visit. So please grab a friend, go to Bible school on Tuesday. I'm sure you won't be disappointed. And then we also have Encounter One tomorrow. So Encounter One is about the foundations of our faith, about baptism, salvation, and the Holy Spirit. So if you have any questions about that, or if you are new to church, we invite you to please go and check it out. Um, we sure all of those burning questions you have will be answered there. Um, and then, very exciting, we will be having a baptism service again. <laughs> So next weekend, as I'm sure all of you know, is our Jesus weekend. Um, yes, we can give a shout to Jesus. <laughs> yeah. 
We are extremely excited for everything the Lord wants to do throughout the weekend. And we will be ending the weekend off on Sunday with a baptism service in the morning and the evening. So if you want to get baptized, please join the group, sign up. We would love to, to baptize you next week, Sunday. Okay, that's all from my side. Over to you, Jason. Thanks so much, Denise. Why don't you stand with us? I might be the only one, but how many of us felt a shift in the room when we started dancing for the Lord? Um, I believe in the scriptures it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, everything within me, bless His holy name. And sometimes there's a way to read that scripture that means that we bless the Lord on the inside. But I, I would submit to you, and without the sermon, that we bless the Lord with everything that we are. You know, with our lives, with our relationships, with our songs with our thoughts, with our surrender, you know, with our posture towards the Lord of God, I will bring you whatever worship you desire, whatever worship you are worthy of, be it with my body, be, with it, be it with my mouth. And tonight we're going to be singing some dense material, some very rich theology about who Jesus is. And the risk is that when we sing these things, they come in the ear and out the other ear. But the opportunity, the invitation that we have is to connect our hearts to the truth of who Jesus is. That He is worthy. That He is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. That He is coming back again. That He is unstoppable. And to respond to Him in worship, however that looks. So before we sing, I'm going to give us a moment for us to connect our hearts to Jesus by the Spirit. Jesus, we are your children. Your sheep hear your voice. And God, we renounce every lie that says that we are not your children because of what Jesus has done. Thank you this morning, this evening, for the finished work of Jesus on the cross. For the blood of Christ that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. We respond to that this evening, God. We say, hallowed be your name, God. You are worthy. And where you are, once you begin to lift up that song of worthiness of Jesus. Once you begin to open your mouth and sing the praises of God. In the presence of our Father.
For the sins of the world, His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion.
soaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before our God. Our God is Lamb, the Lamb that is slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him.
Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord God. And God, we start right here in the sanctuary. If you feel led to respond, no, no, no pressure, no stress, no coercion. I want you to just respond to the invitation to kneel before the King. This morning, I really believe tonight that a lot of us are going to be shocked when we get into heaven. We're going to see the elders, we're going to see how passionately they worship, how they give everything. 
as God's people tonight, we get to mirror what is going on in heaven. So let's do that. Won't you just mirror what's going on in heaven? Imitate the elders as they on their knees cry out to the Lord, singing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty.
but I would like you to prophesy something about South Africa. Prophesy over ESCOM. Prophesy over the taxi strikes. Whatever it be, whatever the Lord lays on your heart, let's direct it in prayer. Lift your voice. The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. Lift your voice and prophesy. That the lamb that was slain would receive the reward of his suffering, God. We're trusting you for our families. Jesus, we're trusting you for our friends, God. We're trusting you for the lost, God. This glory, with this glory, the earth is filled with this glory, with this glory, the earth is filled with this glory, with this glory, the earth is filled with this glory, with this glory, the earth is filled with this glory, with this glory. The earth is filled with this glory, with this glory. The earth is filled with this glory, with this glory. The earth is filled. The earth.
is gone, is gone. This whole is gone, is gone. With this glory, with this glory. A few months ago we were, and I pray that this is how we land the plane today. But there was a conference organized by Fire and Fragrance called Exalted. Um, <clears throat> and on the first night of the two-day conference there was a song that came out. Um, the words of it were, make Cape Town a city of, of the open door where the glory of the Lord will fall and the orphan comes back home. And we really feel as a team that there's an opportunity for us to prophesy that. I don't know how many of us know of the fire prophecies from Sina von Rensburg that have been coming for the last 100 years, but <clears throat> the number of people that I've seen over the last few weeks and months and years that have had the same vision and know nothing about one another leads me to believe that God is on this city. And when God's on the city, he's not on the buildings, he's on the people. He's on us. When he knocks on the door of our heart, we can either say, yes, Jesus, we give you everything, or we can run away. Either way, he's fine. Either way, we'll make heaven, but we don't get to be a part of what he does. So as we sing this song, I recognize that some of us come out of very different backgrounds, and faith looks very different for every single one of us, as to find words, to sing the same thing, that Cape Town will be the city of the open door where the glory of the Lord will fall and the orphan would come back home. But let's do it with faith tonight. Let's do it with faith. And I'd like to ask, actually, Autumn, would you sing it for us? I really believe, because she brought the word. Let's just go after it. So let's all just jump in the river. Amen. Where the glory of the Lord will fall And the 
Shepherd, you are with us. Emmanuel, God with us, you are with us, God. You are with us. Why would my soul be downtrodden and discouraged when the Lord is with me? Why would we be discouraged when the Lord is with us? God before us, who dare be against us? If God before us, who is against us? If God be for us, who is against us? Mm. Some of you aren't hearing what I'm saying tonight. If God is for us, who is against us? So one last time, surely your goodness. And surely your goodness and mercy will follow me all of my days. All of my days. Surely your goodness and mercy will follow me all of my days, all of my days. Surely, surely your goodness and mercy will follow me all my days, all of my days. Surely your goodness. And mercy will follow me all of my days, all my days. Yes, Father, thank you, Lord, that. There is no way, Father, that you ask us to go, Lord, where you do not go before us, Lord, and come behind us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your, your goodness and your mercy, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you are restoring, Father God, a heart of worship, Lord God, in this church, Lord, a heart that desires, Father, not to dwell, like not to leave your presence quickly, Father but to dwell, Lord Jesus, in your tent forever, Father. With hearts that cry out, Lord, that this is the one thing I desire, Father. Dwell in your house forever, Father God. Enjoy you, Father, forever, Lord. Yeah, thank you, Lord God. Thank you that you are faithful, Lord. Yeah, you're, you will never betray your faithfulness, Lord. So thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you all the glory, Lord, everything, all of it, Lord, our lives, our hearts, Father, our song, Lord Jesus, it's all yours, Father. Lord God, thank you, Lord, thank you, Jesus. We love you, Father. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Transition, just give a moment to just tell Jesus how you love him. In your own way, in your own words. We just thank him for a moment.
before we move on, I'm just going to ask Jason to keep playing. Um, while we were interceding before the service, we really uh, felt God say to us quite strongly that He He wants to establish our primary calling before our secondary calling. And what that means is that each one of us, we are we are all called to something in the workspace or if it's for the church or if it's in engineering, in the marketplace, NGO space, whatever it is, but that always comes second. And that our primary calling, our first and our foremost primary calling is to know God. That's eternal life. Our primary calling is to make disciples. Our primary calling is to worship and enjoy God, glorify Him and enjoy Him forever. And I think that's what God wants to do tonight in, 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 our, in His presence as we've been worshiping. God wants to first establish that primary calling that we get to enjoy Him forever and worship Him before we go out and do. That our primary calling is to first be with God before we do for God. And so I'm going to ask us just to, just to pray with one another. And, you know, just that God would come and continue that work and say, God, I want to know my primary calling first before my secondary calling. And there was a scripture just also in Exodus 33. It's one we paraphrase a lot that... Um, Sydney reminded us of where it says it's where Moses says Lord we, we don't want to go into the promised land if your, if your presence won't go with us and that was Moses saying Lord I will not fulfill my secondary calling which is to bring the Israelites into the promised land unless my primary calling of being in your presence forever is fulfilled and so we want to be a people that put first things first primary calling first so can we pray together can we ask God to impart that in, in our hearts so just turn to someone and let's just let's trust God that He's going to do that in our hearts. Amen.
on me and you can start to finish off those prayers and take a seat when you're done praying. Thank you, band, for just serving us. Um, can we just honor the band quickly and the sound team and all those who served us tonight, um, those who interceded before the service, those who did set up, um, you know, all, all to make this possible, just for us to congregate together and put our eyes on Jesus. Um, I think... Um, I think God wants to, God really wants to encounter us tonight, um, and I believe it's a, a part of where we're going in the next week. Um, we have Jesus Week coming up, Jesus Weekend, and the the primary focus, like the heart behind this Jesus Weekend, and um, the ushers are just going to be taking up the offering. Um, so yeah, let them continue with that. As I just share the. We really felt that God, the last time we had Jesus Week, uh, Jesus Weekend in the, in, the second, in the first semester, there was a lot that God wanted to do in our hearts and sort of in-house, that we did a lot of encounter nights and activation, and um, there was teams that came from other congregations just to serve us and minister to us, and, um, and I think it was necessary for that season. I think God loves to do that, but I think God is, and I think God has been working with a plan tonight, with just with singing that song even over Cape Town and the prophecies coming that God doesn't want us to stay in the house, that we need to leave the building in order for the gospel to come in Stellenbosch in South Africa and the rest of the continent. Um, and so this Jesus weekend, we are primarily shifting towards how can we go out? How can we take what God has done in our hearts? How can we take what He's doing in our lives? Let Him fill us up and then go out with that good news. Um, and I think yeah, that that song confirms it, talking about how Cape Town is going to be the city of the open door. Like we need to open the doors and be going out and inviting people in. Um, and as well, the rest of the song talks about where the orphan comes back home, where the glory of the Lord will fall. We are... We are putting our focus in three primary spaces, and that's evangelism, altruism, which is a Jason George word for selflessness. In other words, a big fancy English word that I had to Google. And advocacy, another one I had to Google, representing political causes in public spheres. Um, and we need to go out with the gospel into those three spaces. Um, and so how we've shaped the, the weekend is, is the, the schedule up there on the board. Um, Friday night, we are going to do some evangelism. Um, we have some people coming in that are going to, we're going to spend some time just worshiping together, and then we're going to get some training and equipping, and then we're going to go out. We're going to go out into the streets and do some pub ministry, um, and we are going to spread the good news with, with people in Stellenbosch. Um, and how can the lost hear it if we don't go to where the lost are? Okay, so that's why we go out. That's why we want to do that. Um, the morning, we're going to, where it says mercy outreach, that's our altruism. How can we selflessly serve our community? And so we've split that morning into three places that you can serve. Um, there will be three opportunities, and it's going to be a family morning with an ECD, an early childhood development center in Kayamandi. Um, basically, kids from three to nine, um, and we're going to invite their parents, and we're going to spend some time just serving them, running a program with the kids, and meeting the, the people that run Kuyasa in Kayamandi. And then in Klutusville, similar thing where we're going to have another family day, but with our, our congregation there, Shofar Klutusville. Um, we're going to partner with them, and we're going to try and do our best, and we're going to just serve their congregation. They are doing amazing things in Clutusville, and we just want to partner with what they're doing. And so we're going to be there meeting the congregation and inviting the community to come join in a family day. And then lastly, um, Prochorus, which we did a big launch. There's a, a stall at the back there. They are our partnership um, NGO, 
and they do a lot of awesome work in Stellenbosch as well, and they are our primary vehicle for connecting you guys to Mercy Ministries. So even if they themselves don't provide, maybe you have a heart, for example, for um, gang-related Mercy Ministry, and they don't specifically do that. They have plenty of connections. So there is a Prochorus Info Group um, on the link tree. If you have a heart to serve Stellenbosch, and also if you would like to get involved on that Saturday morning, all of the information is going to be on that Prochorus group. We don't want to make endless WhatsApp groups. So if you would like to get involved that Saturday morning, you need to go and join that Prochorus group. And then there we will ask you to RSVP for either the Kai Mandi, the Prochorus in Yonkazuk, or the Klutusville morning. Um, sorry, the Prochorus morning is going to look like a, a holiday club also for youth um, up till about 18, and um, that's going to be in Yonkazuk. So if you want to get involved in one of those three areas, this is the one event that we need you to please RSVP for um, because there are obviously a certain number of people that we're going to be serving and we need to know how many facilitators we have. So please, um, we're going to meet here in the hall on Saturday morning at 9 a.m., but please join one of those groups and you'll find those on the Prochorus info group. You can go to the stall to find out some more at the end of the service if you'd like. And then the Saturday night, advocacy. We're going to look at how can we engage in certain political causes and things. And I think this is something that a lot of, I've got a lot of questions come to me about. How as Christians do we represent Christ in a, a fast turning world and a, like things and represent in, in areas around um, LGBTQ plus communities or trans um, gender movement in the and we're going to have like a panel discussion. That's the word I'm looking for. We're going to have a panel discussion here in the hall with people that represent in those areas. And so come with questions, come and listen. Um, there's also going to be some talks around human trafficking and how can you serve there? How can you be more aware of what's happening there? And yeah, so if you have a heart for evangelism, um, for serving mercy ministries and advocacy, please Please prioritize where you think you have a heart and a passion for. And if you have capacity, come to everything. Okay? But we, we want to see you. We want to mobilize and empower and champion you in the areas that you have a passion for. Okay? So there are. Then the Saturday morning and the Sunday evening, we have our normal services. And we're going to finish with a big celebration in baptizing some people um, and just celebrating what the Lord has done. Okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And then I just want to quickly, one last announcement before I hand over to George. He's going to carry on in our relationship series. This is the second week in our relationship series. Um, I just want to, to bring all the men's attention um, forward. We are starting our Men's Connect finally on the 23rd of August. So what is Men's Connect? We have a heart to see um, the men connect with different generations, right? So there's a whole... Most of the students are often um, very oblivious to this, but there is a whole morning service, right, where all of these families and parent age people come. It's amazing. It's normally a bit slower and less jumpy than these evening services. But if you have a heart to connect, especially with older people, men and women, please feel free to come to the morning service. Um, yeah, interact with, meet some of the older generation. They have been serving God faithfully for many, many years, and we have a lot to learn from them and a lot that we can give as well. Um, but for the men specifically, this is a place where you can, we're going to have a, a big braai because there's no other way for men to gather. Hallelujah. And, uh, but it's, <laughs> uh, we're going to just connect and we're going to, start the evening, so just how it's going to look, how it's going to go forward, and then we're going to start having them on the last Wednesday of each month, um, and we're going to do it in smaller groups from there forward. So one big gathering this Wednesday, and then start connecting people in smaller groups once a month, just to connect with the older generation. Um, so yeah, so look out for that also on the info group, and it's next week, Wednesday. Not this one coming before Jesus weekend, the one after, 23rd of August. Awesome. I'm going to hand over to George. Um, and he's going to carry on in our relationship series. And yeah, maybe we can just quickly pray for him. If you all want to just reach out your faith, and we're just going to pray for George. You know, thank you, Lord, for the mouthpiece that George is, Lord God. Um, thank you, Father, that he has such a pure heart, Father God, that wants to best communicate what's on your heart, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the gift that he is to this congregation, Lord God. And we just want to bless him and um, pray, Father God, that your words, Father, would be in his mouth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, Chris. 
think I heard one of my children. Okay, this is one of the few times that my children are also in the evening service and my wife. So it's great. Praise the Lord. They took a massive afternoon nap. Oh, well, I napped with them, and now they're going to sleep a lot later than what they're supposed to. I just want to, just before, sorry for my voice. I do have a little bit of a thing. Um, praise the Lord. I, I can speak at least. Um, I do just want to say one thing, just out of worship, and I do want to honor us as a people. Because um, I don't know if you know this, but God doesn't pitch because of Jason George or the band or me or the intercessors. He pitches because we are a people that are hungry for his presence. He comes and he pours his glory out because there are vessels that say, Lord, we want more of you. And like I was just overwhelmed here this evening just because God came, not because we have this, but because of the things that are happening in our hearts, saying, Jesus, we want you. And like I was just overwhelmed because if we get, if we get that us coming with a hungry heart means that we come with faith, it will change our lives because Jesus is everything. He is everything. And so I want to honor you for coming week after week with hungry hearts. Because this doesn't happen everywhere. I don't know if you know this, but this doesn't happen everywhere. The glory of the Lord doesn't come like this everywhere. There's a mystery behind it which I cannot explain. I don't know why. But we are privileged to sit in the presence of God like this. And so last week, Gilly shared beautifully um, about live authentically in relationship with other believers um, it was, it was awesome, and, and one thing that I just kind of want to, to add to that, and it's kind of jumping on the, the, the men's connect, is um, there's this concept called the table of support, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch on it a little bit tonight, not completely, um, but it's getting a table of people around you that are people that are older, people that are younger, people that are the same age, people that are different, cultured to you, people that you are training up in something, discipling in something, someone that, that is discipling you around the table that will help shape your life and point it towards Jesus. And this, this idea of living authentically in relationship with other believers is like, it's not just you and your friends, but it's people who can mentor you, people who you can mentor, people who have different cultures and different traditions and ways of doing things than you and getting into their space and understanding that Jesus loves and lives through everyone. And so this week we're going to... Um, Hilly asked him, what, what topic does he want me to share on? And he, and he said, um, the, good, the, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I asked him, do you have something specific? And he, and he said, no. Um, it's kind of just, he didn't know what to put in there, so he threw that out so that we can put anything under it. But as I was praying, the Lord spoke to me. And so tonight, we're going we're gonna to be talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly. And we're going to talk about keeping in the good, keeping out the bad, and staying very far away from the ugly. Right? And I'm not talking about relationships when I say that, or people. What I'm talking about is boundaries. Right? And a lot of you are like, oh, boundaries now. Right? All, and, 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 and this is key, right? So if you're taking notes, pretty much tonight is going to work. For the first 10, 15 minutes, I'm going to say a couple of things that you want to write down. After that, engage your heart. Like, I'm being serious. I'm not trying to make a joke. Write down, there's a couple of key principles that I want you to get and then engage your heart. Because priorities and boundaries can never be separated. Priorities are what is most important to you. Right? And we all have an idea. Oh, priorities. What is most important to me? But how does that actually play out? It plays out in me saying that if... If something is a high priority for me, I will give up many other things to protect it. Right? So if watching the spring box is a high priority for you, you see these funny videos of old whims standing at a wedding or at a birthday, and they make as if they're taking a video, but they're actually watching the rugby. Right? That shows what your priority is. It shows what your priorities are. So priorities are what you find most important to you. 
Boundaries protect your priorities. Boundaries are what you say yes to and what you say no to. And in a Christian context, boundaries mean holiness. Holiness means the fear of God. Because I say, I am going to limit myself to a certain set of principles, ways of living, so that I would live the best life possible. And I don't know if, if, if I've said this to you, but I'm a, little, I'm a little bit of a pluck about this. But the world, the world is telling you that freedom is to do whatever you want to do when you want to do it. The Bible says that this is slavery. You know why? Because your desires are not consistent. Your desires are fleeting. Because one moment you want chocolate, the next moment you want a burger. So if I have to give in to everything that I want, then I want the chocolate and the burger. And this, and that, and that. And so I, there's no consistency in my life. And so what I'm actually doing is I'm running after a bunch of things, and I'm driven by my desires, and I have no consistency in my life. Boundaries is a way of saying, you know what, I know what is good for me. I, I have put my, I, you know, like, we get this. Who of you have come back from a December holiday and said, I ate just way too much? And then New Year's resolution, I'm going to get fit, right? They don't last very long, but we put this into our, into our gym programs and our eating programs. We say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give up eating chocolates and fried foods and I'm going to eat chicken breasts and broccoli and brown rice without salt, <laughs> because I want to get healthy, right? And we, we, we limit our options because we know what's best for us. But yet, when it comes to the desires of our hearts, we're very bad with our boundaries. We say, I'm just going to follow the desires of my heart. You know what the Bible says about your heart? It's deceitful above all things. Right, and so I'm going to put a little, couple of things just in perspective and it's going to balance out. I'm not, going to, I'm not just trying to hoy a hard word here. So say with me, keep in the good. Keep out the bad. Stay away from the ugly. Okay, boundaries. We're going to talk about boundaries tonight. Right, and so there's many books that will tell you about boundaries and um, that will tell you from a psychology point of view. But I want to ground this in Scripture. Psalm 16, verse 1 to 6. We're going to go verse by verse tonight. Praise Jesus. Verse 1. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. Keeping in the good. It's the first thing is realizing that I cannot preserve myself and therefore I cannot rely on my desires. I need to rely on God to preserve me. This is a place of humility. Pride says I can do it. God doesn't need to do it for me. Humility says, God, you preserve me. You preserve me. Oh God, for in you I take refuge. Is God your refuge? If, so, brace yourself. If God is not your ultimate refuge, forget about dating. If God is not your ultimate refuge, forget about dating. You know, because, we've, because this is not the world, this is the church. We have idolized marriage and relationships. And we have said that I am more significant when I am in a relationship or when I am being pursued to be married or pursuing someone to be married. Does God desire us to be in relationship and get married? Yes. He loves it. Not when you make it higher than Him. Not when you make it higher than Him. If you are dating, right, and you're seeing like, hey, on sak fas, the communication is difficult. I have stuff. You have stuff. That's just called being a human being. That just that's just called being a human being. <laughs> that that one hit home somewhere.
how do you know, how do you realize how unfit you are? Is you go for a run, and then you realize how fit or unfit you are, right? How do you realize what are the areas that you need to work in, in a relationship, right? Sometimes it's by being in a relationship. I'm not saying try to figure it out while you're, you know, Find your refuge in God. Make Him your safe space, the place that you run to. But I just, want to, I just felt to say this, that if you're in a relationship and you're struggling, you're battling through it, it's just your selfishness that's coming out. Right? It just expounds. It just becomes, ask Lauren here. It just gets worse when you get married. Right? Because now you can't go home and deal with your thoughts and then come back nice and calm. You sleep in the same bed. Right? But... It's this iron sharpening iron, right? And I see too many people say, you know, we're going to break up because things are not working out. There's a place for that, but we're gonna, I'm going I'm to tell you how you navigate this tonight. Okay. I say this. I, I say do not go into dating if, you, if God is not your ultimate refuge because, one, you will ignore the Holy Spirit because you have made an idol. You will make an idol of the relationship. Remember, you're in a relationship with God right? And now if you place this relationship with a guy or a lady above that, you are going to place that on the throne of the life, and you're going to think that that's your place of refuge and not God. So you will ignore the Holy Spirit because that's not first in your life. The second thing is you will give your heart to someone that is not God. So I'm going to be a little bit vulnerable tonight. Is that okay with you guys? So the first girlfriend that I had um, in university, we, um, I met her, I started pursuing her, started pers just meaning I spent time with her. Let's get rid of these words, intentional and pursual. Just, I, just got, I just got to know her. I just took her out for coffee and got to know her, right? I just took her out for coffee and got to know her. And I decided, you know what? I really want to date this girl. Like I really see that like, yo, like our hearts are connecting and like there's, there's a possibility of marriage, right? One day, like she's amazing. I knew her for a couple of years before that. Um, but when I started spending time with her and she was in a space where she was a little bit unsure of like, should she be in a relationship or not? And so she told me that she was open and honest. She said she doesn't know if she can be in a relationship. She, she maybe has some stuff in her heart to figure out. And I was like, shut And I went to my mentor and I was like, this is, you know, this is the situation. It's a bit tough for me. It's not like her. I've told her that I like her. And she's like, you know, and we were kind of like growing closer. And she's like, ah, oh, put a hold on it. That's not like her. Um, and he said, okay, but don't let it go on forever, right? Don't let it keep you on a lanky. Say, let's pray about it. Let's, let's take a month. I give you a month just to pray about it, right? We, we're not in a relationship. There's nothing romantic going on. We're just building friendship. I see a possibility down the line and I go home after this and I'm like yes like in a month it's long I don't want to do this and I was just like okay Lord like Lord what must I do how, how do I do this how do I navigate this and I and the Holy Spirit prompted me right because God was my refuge I hadn't given I hadn't given the relationship time to get top priority God was my top priority and the Lord said give me your heart don't give your heart to her I was like, yes, that makes sense. That makes sense. God is ultimately good and perfect. Why not give my heart to him? Gave my heart to him. It was a week later. She was like, I want to be in a relationship. I was like, great, let's go, right? <laughs> dated, for th dated for two and a half, three years. I was, I was I'd, I'd planned how I was going to propose just to kind of put it out like how far in my head. She broke it off, Right? Like, there was a part of me that died. It's, it's tough. If some of you have been through that, it is tough. It's not lucky. You grow close to someone. There's a plan. There's a, right? You know what was the first thing that the Holy Spirit told me when I went into the secret place? You gave me your heart. You're fine. You're fine. Right? I cried my flipping eyes out. <laughs> I didn't understand what was going on, but I knew that I had given God my heart. He was my place of refuge. I'm going to share another testimony. So now I'm through this. I'm like, you know, God, please don't test me like this again. 
This is tough. So now Nareen, my, my wife, I start liking her. The Lord says, just pray for her. Now I'm on a trip to Madagascar. I'm sitting in the back of a bucky for six days and I'm praying and I'm trying not to pray for her because I don't want to make her the point of my mission. And I'm like praying for everything and I pray for, I think everything that I could think of and I'm like, okay, let me pray for Nareen. And I pray for her and I pray for her and I pray for her and I'm like, okay, God, now I've prayed for her. Can I, can I tell her that I like her? <laughs> get together just that she wouldn't get to know God deeper, right? Confession. We were, on a, we were on this mission. And I was like, yes, I need to. I just want to talk to her. Lord, what's, hap what's happening on their mission? Lord, give me a word for their mission. <laughs> right? So he wants to bless their mission. And so I send her the message. I'm like, yeah, I feel the Lord saying this and this and this for your mission. <laughs> by, by the way, how are you doing? Um, <laughs> God is going to tell you exactly who your wife or your husband is, right? Um, on the way back, I'm like, okay, Lord, like, yes, I, I've really, I've prayed. And I honestly, like, I really want to go into a relationship with this lady. She's freaking amazing. And the Lord says, and I, and I was like, can I, can I tell her? And I thought, ask the Lord, can I tell her that I like her? And he's like, you can do it, but I give you no guarantee. And I was like, you know what? That settled my heart so much. Because the Lord asked me, will you trust me? Because I've given him my heart. I didn't put my faith, I didn't put my trust in the relationship or in the marriage. One day I put my trust in God. That's the point I'm trying to make. Is God your refuge? Whew, time is going very quickly. Okay. Verse 2. I say to the Lord, I say to the Lord, Focus, focus, focus. Come back, come back, come back. You're still writing things down, eh? I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. Right? And so I wanted to go into to, to what it means to say Jesus is Lord, right? But just basically there's this, there's this concept of being a bond servant, right? So slaves in Jesus' time, they would work a certain amount of hours. They would work, uh, not hours, years. Um, and there would come a time where they'd worked for their freedom, right? But some uh, slave owners were so good to their slaves that when they were set free, the slave would say, you know what, it is better for me in your house to work for you than to just be free on my own. And then they would actually go and for some other weird reason in, this, in their culture, they would um, put their earlobe against the door and nail their, their ear to the door. Um, as a symbol that, you know what, I have the choice of freedom, but I give myself to you. Why? Because it is good, right? That is what it means to say that Jesus Christ is Lord. And then it says, I have no good apart from you, right? This is, we read over this and like, we have no good apart from you, right? If, you, if we get this, if we get a revelation of this, our whole lives will change, completely. I'm asking the Lord continually deepen my revelation of this. So there's a picture of priorities, right? We're going to talk a little bit about priorities, right? This is, this is a picture from the internet, so excuse the, um, yeah, it's not that beautiful, but this is how we think of um, priorities, right? God on top, spouse, children, occupation, ministry, fill in whatever is your priorities, right? This is like, this is how I, for my, for my whole life, looked at priorities, until I spoke to one of my mentors, and it just changed everything in the way that I view priorities, right? This is great, but the only problem with it is it separates every part of your life from God. It's saying, as long as God is on top, I can do whatever I want at the bottom. And that's not the intention. The intention is amazing to say, you know, we want God. First love, the church in Ephesus and Revelation, right? First love, first love. It's amazing. But our minds separate the rest of our lives. And so if you can maybe go to the next picture. I couldn't find a great um, picture. So this is how I drew it. This is how I see priorities. That as the scripture, I have no good apart from you. My whole life is focused on Jesus, on serving God, on loving him, right? And I love what Henny says. 
The gospel is not opposed to effort, but it is opposed to earning. I don't do these things and I don't do any works to earn credit from God. But it doesn't say that I shouldn't put in effort. Right? And so if I say that this is my life, the stage is my life, God consumes all of my life. He's not just on the top. He is everywhere and in everything. And then within that, certain things have different priorities. Right? And now some of your brains are maybe going to clutch out the OCD people. I'm going to clutch out. Not every priority in your life will carry the same weight always. Let me explain. If me and my wife, as we did last weekend, and my family, have an off weekend, we just spend the whole weekend together. On Monday morning, I get a call of crisis at the church, um, or someone needs deliverance, or I need to go the next weekend and do a wedding somewhere in Kukunop, or something like that, right? And my family can't go with because my wife is pregnant, and our children are... She can't look look after them alone, right? In a sense, my family takes a smaller priority in that moment. Not because it's less important, but just because my family is cared for. But at that moment, the ministry, the deliverance that takes a greater importance. And so it's learning to, to, to live through the ebbs and the flows of life. That life isn't just straight lines and blocks, Life is a little bit messy. Life is a little bit, right? And this is where church starts becoming church, is where we say, you know what? If we want to be like Jesus, our priorities can't just stay like pa, pa, pa. Because maybe you're super tired because you were studying or you were working all through the night and the Holy Spirit prompts you to go and pray for someone or to wake up in the middle of the night and pray for Kazakhstan or something like that. What is priority? If number two on the list is rest, I'm going to choose rest above obedience to the Holy Spirit. And so life and priorities are a little bit more mobile than what we think they are. Right? And so maybe just the next slide just to show you what what I mean. There we go. God first, God in everything. And the reason why this is important is because if we see God as first but not included in everything, our view of marriage, dating, sex, sexuality will not be ultimately good because it's apart from God. And because God is creator, that good, we can actually find good in our work, in our studies, in our sexuality, in our marriage because it's only good when it's found in him. Right, and the beautiful, beautiful example is Abraham and Isaac. Abraham offering Isaac on the altar, saying, you know what, my son is my top priority, but obedience is to, the, to the Lord is a greater priority. And you know what's beautiful? Is that that's the first time in Scripture that worship is mentioned, where, the, where he's about to stand, kill his son, and, um, and the Lord says, don't do it, don't do it. He says, for now, truly, I know that I can trust you. I'm paraphrasing. This is truly worship. So if we truly desire worship, obedience to the Lord, all of our life is in him. How much time do I have left? More or less? 13. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I think this is so important. Uh, part, part of this, and I think this is, yeah. Um, if we see God as first, and what that does is it means that I live, sometimes I live a Sunday to Wednesday to Sunday Christian life. And so the rest of the things that I do do not ultimately matter to God un- unless I come into his presence And this ultimately fails. And I want to say this to you. I I have a bee in my bonnet about this. Because it will think, you will think about your body and your emotions very incorrectly if you separate God from your relationships. If it's just on a list of priorities, you will separate your sexuality and what you do with your body 
from God. And so the, the liberal agenda, the West, wants to separate that even further to say there's a separation between your body and your personality. And with God, that's never. You are one person. Your body and your personality are one together. Right? If you ever want to read a book about sexuality, Love Thy Body, Nancy Piercy. If you're a little bit intellectual, if, you're not, like, if you don't like reading research articles, don't, don't, take, don't get the book. But it's, 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 a, it's, it's the, one of the most profound books that I've read because it talks about how hookup culture has, once again, taught us to go after our desires, separate our bodies from our emotions, and so I can just do what I want. I can just watch porn. I can just hook up with who I want just to, to please myself, and it's not going to have an effect on my emotions. No, that's a lie. You're killing your emotions. You are killing your soul when you do these things. And you know what? Because I've done it. You are so unsatisfied afterwards. But the world won't say it. Because it's the culture. It's the hype. It's, it's the pinnacle of where we need to attain to. It's just carelessness about our bodies. Right? And so, if you are stuck in addiction of porn... Do not leave it, please. You know why? Because you're watching people being raped. That does something to your mind. That does something to the way that you view your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your husband or your wife one day. It means that you have an expectation of your wife or your husband to do whatever was on the screen when you were growing up. You think, oh, it's just like, oh, it's just a sin. It's like lying. I can just, you know, whatever. Please. Like, if you want to have your heart stirred this week coming now, there's a movie coming out, Sound of Freedom. Go and watch it. Have your heart gripped to understand what the depths of the depravity of the world is. How ruined the world is. Sorry, I used a lot of big words now. How ruined the world is. And I want to say this. like porn Pornography is ruining our lives. It is ruining our view of that we were made in the image of God. And just saying, we can just do whatever we want with our bodies because it doesn't really matter. Please, please, please. If you, if you cannot get out of the, the cycle of pornography, get people around you, go for deliverance, walk a road, go to redeem, go to conqueror. I, I Believe me, there is a way out. Because you will ultimately be satisfied in God alone because He is your good. There is no good in that stuff. There is only good in God. Right? And I'm not bringing condemnation. I just have a seriousness in my heart. I have two daughters, a third on the way. And so there's something that stirs in my daddy heart that is like the boys, the guys that want to come close to my daughter. Yeah, guys, play, pray for me, please. <laughs> pray for me. Okay, let's leave it at that. Let's leave it at that. Okay. So, so, so we, we looked at this, boundaries, priorities, we're keeping, we're keeping in the good. God is my only good. God is my refuge. I surround, my life is in Christ, keeping out the bad. Verse 3, as for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my delight. A group of people that you can walk with in openness and honesty and vulnerability who will shepherd you, who will guide you, who will push you into holiness and not into God, ungodliness. People who care more about your holiness than your comfort. The saints, people who are saintly, people who are excellent, people who desire God above all else. And I know this is, this is rare but I have had the privilege of walking with, um, it was 11 guys, two of the guys um, kind of shift, moved, moved along. But we are nine guys that since our second year have met once a week. We live all over the world. But for the last 11 years, we've been meeting once a week to check in on one another, right? And so in the beginning, where most of you are, most students here, young working, where most of you are now, it was like, hey, like, are you studying? Like, are you watching porn? Like, how is your, how is your um, relationship going? How are you stewarding your finances? And later on, we grew into an interconnected group of people that were like, you know what, you have more than just accountability. You have a calling on your life. And like, I want to push you and honor you and like, like 
push your life in a direction that you would honor the calling that God has over your life. And so when you make decisions that are contrary to that, I'm going to tell you no. Like you don't do those types of things, right? And that can be your small group. It doesn't have to be your small group, right? So just so that you don't have to have an expectation that it has to be your small group, but that there would be a bunch of people around you that will, that will steward your holiness more than your comfort, Right, and so even to the extent, so I want to share a testimony that Noreen and myself, we, I think I've shared this, but I can't remember. Um, me and Noreen and I, we, we had an opportunity to go to Taiwan on mission, and then all of a sudden we had this opportunity to go to Italy on holiday at the same time, right? And so we were like, obviously our desires are very fleeting, and we want to do the holiday in Italy. But like it seems like there's something of God in it, but we're too subjective to, to make a choice. And so we went to our small group, we went to our people, and we said, hey, like, there are these two opportunities. Whatever you say, we'll do. And we were like, of course they're going to tell us to go to Taiwan on mission, right? That's the right thing to do. And all, all of our friends, all of our closest people came back and they said, you know what, we think that the Lord actually has something for you in Italy. And we were like... Oh, okay, now some of your brains are really flipped around. God wants you to have a holiday? <gasps> but it's this principle of people that we could say, you know what, we're going to submit this to you, whatever you say we do. We trust you. You know, in, in, in COVID, when everybody was thinking about, you know, there's a reality that a lot of people around us are dying. We had a, we had a call and we said, you know what, there's a possibility that, that, maybe not with COVID, but there could happen anything at any moment. You are the people closest to me. You know my wife and my children the most. Will you make sure that my wife and my children are taken care of? Will you be dads to my daughters? All said yes, without a doubt. You know why? Because they believe in me. They've bought into my life. They are the saints, the excellent ones that have said, that have said you know what? We see what God has for you, and we're going to channel you. We're going to push you. We're going to champion you to that. You know what? When I'm going into self-pity, they tell me, out of it. That's not from God. There was a, there was a time where I went into a relationship that I shouldn't have went into. And um, so this is, this is a flag. God wasn't my priority. He wasn't my refuge. I went into a relationship that I shouldn't have. Um, so I want to be sensitive about what I say. And, um, and one day I kind of just pitched up at one of my best friend's house and I'm like, hey, I have a girlfriend. That's, that should be a red flag. He was like, a, a re really? You guys are dating? Wow, okay. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't know things were that serious. Right? I ignored this principle of boundaries and priorities because I was looking for refuge, for safety somewhere else. I looked for it in a relationship, in a person. I ignored the Holy Spirit, and I didn't even tell my community about it. I didn't even inform them about it, right? And so they felt afterwards like, you know, I'd made the decision, so they couldn't really correct me. But after prayer and after counseling, and they said, you know what, this, this is really not the relationship for you. Like, not that, not that there's anything, like, wrong. Like, you're not clashing or, like, going into deep sin, but this is, this is not your wife. This is not the one for you. You know, I was like, I had a moment of clarity because of the accountability around me. And I drove through and I did the hard thing and I, and I sat down with her and I said, you know what, like, yes, it, this is tough, but like, I don't, think, I don't think I can go through with this and actually get married with you. And so I think that the relationship should end now. And um, it was devastating. It was terrible. But you know what, like there was a clarity that came from it. All of a sudden I was hearing the voice of the Lord again because I'd softened my heart instead of hardening my heart. You know why? Because I had a group of people around me that knew what the call of God was over my life and they championed me that way.
And so basically keeping out the ugly is verse 4. The sorrows of those who run after another God shall multiply their drink offerings of blood. I will not pour out or take their name on my lips. And so whenever we step outside of the boundaries that God, that we have placed, that God has placed, sorrows run after us because we run after other gods. wonderful hearing children, especially my children, <laughs> in the house of the Lord. Verse 5 and 6, um, I'm going to start wrapping up, and I'm going a little bit over time, but I feel this is important. Here's now where you engage your heart, obviously the whole time, but put down your pen, don't worry about notes now. The Lord is my chosen. I love how I hear the clicks of everybody's pens and the books packing away. You guys are obedient. That's amazing. <laughs> the Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me. And other translations say the boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. And so you can take this, you can take this that I've said tonight and you can apply it everywhere in life, not just with dating. I've just used dating because we're in a relationship series. But there's this, there's this tension that we need to get right between the Lord Jesus Christ that came to do the work finished on the cross. We do not add to the work of Christ. All we do is respond. But once we've responded, we have the responsibility to respond moment by moment, day by day. I love this, what David says here. He says, the Lord is my chosen portion. I have chosen God as my portion and my cup. I can hear, right, David is a picture of Jesus, and so you can hear Jesus in this, in the wilderness after he gets baptized. The Lord is my chosen portion. The, the enemy comes to try and stum make him stumble, comes to tempt him. He says, no, the Lord is my chosen portion. I will hold on to the Lord. He comes to tempt him again in the Garden of Gethsemane. He says, take a different way. Jesus says, not my will but yours be done because the Lord is my chosen portion. He is my cup, no matter what that cup is, even if it is the cross. And so there's this place where we partner with God. And Luke and I had this amazing conversation on Friday where we were saying, you know, so, my, so many of my prayers, and, and I believe the Lord helps us, but the Lord cannot strong arm us or force us into a change of mind and heart. He cannot force us into it. We have to partner with him. Where we say, Jesus, change my mind, change my heart, change my thoughts. I, I can't get out of this way of thinking. I can't, right? But then when the Holy Spirit tugs on our hearts to obedience, right? And so, so many times, this is just a general example. Like, I'm really tired after the day. There's like, a hell of a lot of sport on at the moment and I love sport and it's like the Lord is drawing me into the secret place and I'm like no I'm rather going to sit in front of the TV and you know what the scary thing is is we we actually believe that the Lord will never stop prompting us but what does he do to the kings in the old testament that just harden their hearts he removes his spirit from them But you know what? There's a, way, there's a way to come back, and that's repentance. It's just saying, God, you know, I resisted you. I resisted you, but Lord, I want to come back. You are my chosen portion. And you know what? The, as we choose God, as we choose God, as we choose God, it says that he holds our lot. As we partner with him, he holds our lot. He holds us in the palm of his hands. And then it says, because I have put the Lord as my chosen portion, one thing I desire, one thing I seek after, to dwell in the house of the Lord, right? That's what David also says in another psalm. 
It says, because of this, the lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Because the Lord is always before me, my boundary lines have been set. Right, and so if I had to tell you tonight, I want to cringe a little bit now that I want to say this, but if I tell you tonight that the floor is lava, <laughs> right? But your chair that you're sitting on is your name on it and your name alone. You cannot stand on someone else's chair, otherwise you have to bump them off. You're going to stand on your chair, right? Because on the chair is where it is safe. On the chair is where your portion is. Be it that you're single, be it that you're dating, be it that you're married. That is your portion for this season, right? And we have a choice to either stay on it because He is our good. If you're in a tough season, if you're struggling with singleness, if you're so struggling even in your relationship, I know there's married people here as well. If you're struggling in your marriage, God intended you to be there. If He doesn't take you out of it, He intends to lead you through it. The lions have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. The floor is lava, man. <laughs> goodness, the goodness of God is your portion. Will you choose it? Jason, if you guys can come up. I've been told to stop. <laughs> Choose to partner with God. Do not ignore the prompting of the Holy Spirit. See Him as your refuge. Just a little recap. See Him as your refuge. Don't see him as number one, but see him as in everything, head of everything, over everything. Your life is in him. And surround yourself with people that will champion you unto holiness and not comfort. These are the three boundaries that I have placed in my life continually. Do I stray from them? Yes, I'm human. What do I do? I run back to God and I say, God, help me. If I don't know it, my community tells me, run back to God. <laughs> Repent. It's good for you. And so Jesus has made the invitation on the cross, and the question is, how will you respond? And I, I, I do want to make a, a, a gospel invitation tonight. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to phrase it like this. When, when I wanted to ask Noreen to get married to me, to tell her, you are the love of my life. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I want to lay my life down and serve you. I want this to get old together. You are the most amazing thing that has happened to me since God. Right? I want to pour out my love to her. Did I ask my best friend to go and tell her that? Nia, yeah, that would be crazy. <laughs> Ask him to get down on one knee and ask her to marry George. <laughs> but it is, it is funny. Me and my best friend, were, <laughs> we were so close at that time that when we got married on the day, he came next to me and my wife and he said, um, Noreen, you know this is a two-in-one package, right? You get him, you get me. <laughs> so there's boundaries. <laughs> right? Even though God told me there's no guarantee this thing was ringing in my head the whole time. Because I loved her so much, I took a, I took a time to drive to Bredasdorp to go and ask her parents if I could marry her. I booked out time to walk up into a mountaintop, one of our favorite spots, told her how much I love her, told her how much she means to me, and then asked her to marry me to spend the rest of our lives together. Praise the Lord, she said yes. <laughs> Jesus did the same for us. He didn't send a message. He didn't send um, some sort of enlightenment. He sent Jesus, his son. He sent Jesus, his son. The cross is the ultimate expression of love. 
She didn't have to do anything but say yes and enter into a relationship. I put on the ring, which is the Holy Spirit in Christian terms. There's some of us tonight that have responded to the gospel thinking that we have to earn our way into the good books of God. That is not the gospel. Jesus made his vows. You know, on a wedding day, you make vows. You say, I will love you. I will keep you. I will be faithful to you. The cross was Jesus' vows unto us. What we do is we respond and we say, yes, Lord, I love you with all my heart. Can we stand together? Sorry, we went, a, we went a bit long tonight, but I think it was good. Did this help you guys? Is this good? Praise Jesus. The Lord wants to invite some people who responded into a works-based gospel. He wants to invite them to enter into His grace this evening. He's saying, you didn't earn salvation you don't have to work for it just partner with me and so if you know you've been working and earning for your salvation i want you to just respond like you can be a small group leader a district leader it doesn't matter if you're hungry for god and you say this i i just i'm stuck i'm earning i'm earning i'm earning i can't rest in the love and the grace and the mercy of god you need to respond by coming out to the front and just saying, Jesus, I want to give you my all again. And even in the same breath, if you know that God is not your refuge, right? So it's going to be a bit of holy chaos now. Facilitators, just ask the people if there's anybody that wants to respond. Just ask the people what you need to pray for. But if you know you need to make God your refuge, there's other things that are your refuge, the place that you run to. Maybe it's food, maybe it's series, maybe it's scrolling on your phone. I want you to step out and just make a declaration and say, Jesus, you are my refuge. You are my place. I give you my heart and nothing else. I give you my heart and nothing else. If that's you, you can just start coming out. I'm just going to make a couple of, there's two more left. If you've wandered from the boundaries that God has set out in your life and you know you're hardening your heart, your ears to the Holy Spirit and you just need to say, Jesus, I want to surrender again. I want to soften my heart. I want to humble myself. Would you just step out from where you are and just come? You're not coming to me. You're not coming to the band. You're just making a faith declaration that Jesus, I want to deal with this tonight. And this is just the first step, right? The altar is not going to save you or is not going to change everything, but the faith inside your heart is going to be planted. And so you continue to partner with God. And then maybe just the last group of people, if, if, if you're struggling with community, if you've been hurt by community, that you would come forward and we just really want to pray for healing. We just really want to pray for the Lord to come and do a work healing I want to ask the Lord to surround you with the right type of people people that will champion you unto holiness and not comfort right Jesus is perfect the church is not come to Jesus so if we can just have the facilitators come out if if Specifically, sorry, I just want to say this. Specifically, if you're responding to that works-based gospel, you want to enter into the, into the grace of God, the mercy of God, I want you to just come stand here on my left-hand side. I want to pray with you specifically. The facilitators can just come out and just, I'm just going to pray, so don't pray yet. I just want to pray a prayer over these lovely, beautiful people. Thank you for responding. And then you guys can ask them what they need prayer for and minister to them and trust the Lord. Then we're going to go into a bit of a time of, of ministry, right? So if you can stay, please stay. I want to pray for the sick just now. I'm going to receive a couple of words just now. We can just take a moment just to pray for these people and then we can move over to that. Amen.
Jesus, we just come to you tonight and we say you are our all in all. Father, in your presence tonight, just seem, things seem to make sense. It's like the world was clarified and our lenses were clarified because you came to encounter us tonight. And Jesus, our, our flesh is strong, Lord. Our flesh wants to, it, it wars against the Spirit. But Holy Spirit, tonight, would you come with your gentleness? Would you come with your power? Would you come with your healing? And just breathe upon us as a congregation again tonight to see you afresh, to see you anew, God. Would you come and rewire us? Would you soften hardened hearts? Would you help us bow the knee of pride that we would stoop low in humility? And if we've wondered, Jesus, I just see you standing with arms wide open, ready to receive.